This is a brown paper bag idea. I made a quick note of it like a poet makes a note of a poem on the back of an old envelope. So here we have then a temple, a note for a temple. And this temple sits in the middle of a lake. And I hope the architect who takes on the job one of these fine future days will um, think of it in terms of a huge abstract cumulus cloud. It should have some large kinetic doodabs set up in the lake around it, like, for instance, the steel fountain. It's um, planned to go 150 foot high with stainless steel tubes swaying back and forth as it rotates, and the rotating would be created from the force of huge jets of water, five jets, all aimed at its base and engaging fins or louvers or paddles at the base. I first execute these ideas in small models. And here, for instance, is a seven-foot fountain and beside it is a 36-foot high wind wand to give you an idea of how it would look in a large scale related to figures. Here is a kinetic figure of motion called flying disks. It consists of five stainless steel disks, each 25 foot in diameter. When they are spun fast, they float up and down. This little model shows why they float up and down. This disc is thin enough so that its sides droop when it is suspended from the center. And when spun, the drooping sides act like propellers or propelling fins and cause the disc to rise and fall because the sides straighten out and the propeller effect is lost. Water is sprinkled up from below at the spinning discs and it makes a nice uh, rain on the tin roof sound. The sprinkling effect is um, alternated with other effects, such as powerful spurts of water causing the discs to dart in and out of the jets at all angles. Doing this, they execute a flashing dance to the accompaniment of their own ringing steel-like cymbal sounds. Okay, next we go off to look at the steel tube of the water swirler. There it is on the left, standing still with water spurting out from both sides. It then assumes a fish-like shape, they call it a harmonic, like this fish standing on its nose, and the water is flung from side to side. Finally, it assumes a swirling, rotating action which is climaxed when the basin of water in which the swirler stands becomes a whirlpool, and the whirlpool rotates in the same direction as the water spiral it's sending out. Now, if you're in a canoe, you can uh, paddle off over to the Avenue of Twisters, and uh, this consists of, oh, I suppose about 15 twisters either side of a lane, an avenue, and uh, they hang down about, oh, 20 feet. I know I've got an eight footer up in my studio. Spun at the top in different speeds, these twisters go into various shapes. And uh, when the spinning bands are suddenly braked, why, they make a fantastic cascading type of sound. Instead of describing the other lake items, maybe we'd better go and get our seat in the temple before the show starts. As I said, the Temple of Lightning is designed to house a particular kinetic work called Sun, Land and Sea. This is a scale drawing. The main sea serpent, the god of the sea, is 150 foot long. The cave goddess hangs down in a 60 foot long loop while the sun ball is 12 foot in diameter. 
Six sea serpents, three on either side of the sea god, accompany him in his undulating dances. The cave goddess, of which this is a five foot small model, slowly turns at the top, but her weight at the bottom holds her. So she spreads out in the shape of an upended pear, when suddenly she flips inside out and the cycle repeats. The doors are closed. The temple is battened down. The sea god raises up off his seabed and pauses en route to send undulating waves along his entire length. When they reach his head, they make a most crashing kind of sound, something like you hear from a bullwhip. It's the same principle. The sea god fronts onto the cave goddess. The undulating waves run along his back in ever increasing tempo. The cave goddess responds with her flips. Now the sea god pauses. The cave goddess strains to flip. The sound of her flipping is heard, but she hasn't flipped when BAM! The god of the sea shoots a 25 million volt arc of electricity through the cave goddess to the sun ball. And don't ask me why. <laughs> ask Freud. 